So welcome to the live expert session on fast stroke. Please remember that the contents of this presentation are for educational purposes only, so not to be duplicated without uh, GE's permission. So during this course, the objective is to introduce you to Fast Stroke, which is an advanced post-processing software. In it, you'll discover how to simplify and optimize your workflow for speedy and effective handling of your patients admitted with a suspected stroke. Upon completion, you'll know what a stroke is, know the different methods for handling stroke CT scans, and understand the principle of operation and the benefits of the fast stroke software, ease of use and speed. It's going to be split into five chapters. So the first one, we will just look at what a stroke is. So stroke is the leading cause of disability and the fourth largest cause of death in the UK. A stroke is a serious life-threatening medical condition that occurs when the blood supply to part of the brain is cut off. The damage this causes can affect the way your body works as well as how you think, feel and communicate. Around 85,000 people a year are admitted to hospital with a stroke and there are over 1 million stroke survivors in England. More, of, more than half of them have a disability resulting from their stroke. Some causes of stroke are genetic. However, up to 70% of strokes could be prevented by the detection and effective management of hypertension, atrial fibrillation, diabetes, cholesterol, and lifestyle factors such as smoking. Stroke becomes more likely with age, but one in four stroke survivors are working age adults. Strokes are classified as ischemic strokes or hemorrhagic strokes. Most often, in 80% of cases, the obstruction to the blood flow is due to a clot or embolism, which blocks the artery leading to the brain. And this is called an ischemic stroke or a cerebral infarction. The main cause is atherosclerosis. This is an accumulation of cholesterol deposits on the arterial walls. These deposits harden progressively and form atheromatous plaques, which constrict the arteries and encourage clots to form. In some cases, a fragment of plaque can also detach itself and travel to obstruct one of the arteries inside the brain. Sometimes the stroke is a consequence of an obstruction by a blood clot which has formed away from the brain, for example in the heart. This clot is then transported to the brain in the blood, and this may occur in particular if the heart beats rapidly and irregularly, for instance in atrial fibrillation. In 20% of cases, the stroke is actually due to a rupture in a cerebral artery, triggering bleeding in the brain. This is referred to as a hemorrhagic stroke. The main cause of hemorrhagic strokes is raised arterial pressure, arterial hypertension, or AH. In some cases, the rupture may occur on a pre-existing anomaly in the artery, such as an aneurysm or a malformation in the artery or vein. If the blood flow to the brain is disrupted, then the brain becomes starved of oxygen and nutrients. This causes brain cells to die in the area of the brain affected. And it's estimated that around 2 million brain cells die every minute during a stroke. So treating them quickly is critical. The average blood flow rate in an adult brain is around 50 mils per minute per 100 gram of brain tissue. However, if this blood flow is reduced, a cerebral infarction is the consequence as perfusion is stopped and this leads to an overload of the backup systems. 
These backup systems are engaged when flow rates fall below 50 mLs per minute per 100 gram of brain tissue. If the blood flow falls to 20 mLs per minute per 100 grams, then the tissue metabolism is altered and neurological symptoms may appear. Below 15 mLs per minute per 100 gram, an ischemic penumbra appears, and this area will show zero activity on an EEG. However, if the blood flow is restored, then the penumbra can be reserved. However, if blood flow isn't restored quickly and the blood flow drops to 10 mLs per minute per 100 gram for more than three minutes, the situation evolves into a necrosis. So what are the symptoms of a, smoke, a stroke? I'm sure we've all heard of FAST. So the F stands for facial paralysis. Is the face sagging? A is for arms, arm weakness. Is the patient able to lift both arms normally? S is for speech. Is the speech impaired or are they finding it difficult to clearly speak? And T, it's time to call 999 urgently. You can always take this one step forward further and be fast. The B is for balance, is the patient having balance difficulties? And the E is for eyesight, are they struggling to see with eyesight changes? These statistics have been taken from the Stroke Association website, stroke.org.uk. Each year in the UK, 100,000 people are victims of a stroke. That's around one stroke every five minutes. Stroke represents the fourth biggest killer in the UK and the third biggest killer in Scotland and Northern Ireland. There are over 1.2 million stroke survivors in UK. And more than eight out of 10 people in England, Wales and Northern Ireland who are eligible for thrombolysis receive it. Whereas in Scotland, only one in 10 of all patients will receive this treatment. Almost two thirds of stroke survivors leave hospital with a disability and the cost of stroke to society is around 26 billion pounds a year. So let's look at the workflow and how we handle the patient. This is the guideline for handling the patient from arrival in A&E to treatment. The target in CT is to obtain a diagnosis within 20 minutes and the tar target for giving thrombolysis if appropriate is less than one hour. Several workflows are possible in CT imaging. The first scan to be done would be a non-contrast head scan to rule out any hemorrhage. After that, you can either go straight on to a CT perfusion and a carotid and circle of Willis angiogram, or you can go for a multi-phase CTA and follow that with a perfusion if necessary. We're going to talk about multi-phase CTA. So for optimum use of the fast stroke software, this is the recommended acquisition. A non-contrast brain, then multi-phase CTA, which may be followed by perfusion. However, perfusion only needs to be performed if you want to compare between the two techniques when establishing the protocol. Um, it's quite good in order to familiarise yourself with multiphase and increase the confidence in the technique. Or you may need to do a perfusion if there's a clinical need for extra information that you would get from the perfusion. The order in which you do um, the exams is not a problem for the fast stroke software. So the idea behind carrying out a multi-phase angio scan is to evaluate the collaterals 
and to be able to answer the question, is this patient a good candidate for thrombolysis or thrombectomy? You'll be able to answer that more quickly and avoid the need to carry out and post-treat a perfusion. If a cerebral perfusion is acquired, an entire phase without contrast is required to obtain reliable results from the perfusion maps. To do this, either the perfusion is scanned before the angio, or you can wait around five minutes until the contrast medium is washed out from the tissues as much as possible in order to get a sound basis for the perfusion. The ASPECT score stands for the Alberta Stroke Programme Early CT Score. And what it is, it's a 10 point score to evaluate early ischemia in the middle cerebral artery territory on a non-contrast brain scan. It's used as part of the evaluation for the eligibility for stroke treatment. So multiphase CTA is a new approach which provides information from a CTA of the carotid arteries and circle of Willis, followed by two further head scans with a typical delay between groups of eight to 10 seconds. Multiphase CTA is a lot more superior to single acquisition in collateral evaluation and predicting the results. In this case, if only a single phase had been acquired, phase one, we would have been able to determine the presence of a thrombus and to localize it, but we would not have been able to confirm whether vascularization of the territory was non-existent or simply delayed and handled by the collateral network. And you can actually see this in phases two and three on this scan. So the protocol for a multiphase CTA, first you would do a carotid and circle of Willis artery from the neck to the top of the head in the arterial phase. So it's important to target the arterial peak in the cerebral arteries, particularly if you're going to use ColorVis, which is part of the fast stroke software. After phase one, you would cover the head again in phase two at around 10 seconds after the start of the first acquisition. And then phase three would cover the head again around eight seconds after the start of the second acquisition. And you can add a fourth phase if you want to and a perfusion after that. A collateral scoring method has been develop developed by the Calgary team. And that's the same team that developed the ASPECT score. It's a five point system with five being the best score with normal collateral filling when compared to the asymptomatic hemisphere. And zero is when there is no collateral filling on the affected hemisphere. You can find the methodology available on their website, along with some clinical cases for self-training. Multiphase CTA can be performed on GE scanners, which have a 40 millimeter or larger detector array. So anything from an Optima 660 for Revolution Evo, HD, Frontier or Revolution CT. In the Revolution CT, both in the 80 millimeter and 160 millimeter detectors, there are optional multiphase CTA protocols available ready built in the GE user protocols. In the Revolution CT 160, the protocol is comprised of a helical first pass and axial passes for the subsequent passes. In the Revolution CT 80 millimeters, all passes are helical. Just bear in mind though that GE protocols are optional 
and nothing's going to stop you from creating your own protocol. And we'll just have a look at how you would do that in the 40 millimeter range. So when building a protocol on a 40 millimeter detector system, there are a few parameters that you need to be aware of. And the first thing is do not use the split function when using fast stroke. Uh, this is because the fast stroke software will not recognize this series as multi-phase if you've got split activated. Use the same scan field of view and rotation time for all acquisitions in order to comply with the timing constraints. And also use the same KVPs if you want to have a good color viz. So the way color viz works, it compares the densities in Hounsfield units of all the phases one against the other. And we know that changing KVP can affect the Hounsfield units. So the same applies for your brain without contrast. It's used as a basis for the color viz. So you should have um, the same KVP in that brain series as well. If you did use different KVPs, the color viz will still work, but vessel recognition will perform less well. So it's just something to be aware of. So I'll just show you an example of the acquisition parameters that we'd use for a Revolution Evo. First of all, you would do a non-contrast helical brain. You can use 100 kVp and the ACE V can set up to 100%. Rotation time is 0.8 second, collimation 20 millimeters and the pitch should be set at 0.531. Auto MA can be used with a minimum MA of 80 and a maximum of 250, and the noise index is seven. The slice thickness should be 1.25 with an interval of 0.625. The second, uh, phase that you're going to do is your multi-phase CTA. So phase one of that is going to be your carotid and circle of Willis angio. Again, you should keep the KVP the same. So 100 KVP, you can have the rotation time at 0.5 of a second and the pitch can be 1.375 on a 40 millimeter collimation. Smart MA can be used with a noise index of 17 and a minimum of 200 and maximum of 400 to 450 MA. Slight slice thickness for this one should be 0.625 on 0.625s and um, the scan field of view should be small body. The second and third passes of the head for the multi-phase angio, again, you should have the KVP at 100, 0.5 second rotation time, coverage 40, the pitch can be 0.984 for this one, and the noise index is 8 with a smart MA, minimum 80, maximum 250 MA. And again, the scan field of view should stay the same as the previous one, so small body. You can follow that with a perfusion if you want, which is used for dynamic tracking of the arrival and exit of the contrast medium through the arteries, capillaries and veins of the cerebral tissue. So during acquisition, the contrast medium is generally injected into a vein in the arm and the images are acquired over 40 to 60 seconds at intervals not exceeding three seconds. Additional passes can be added with a greater time interval to increase the acquisition period, which is required to generate a map of the permeability area. So let's have a little look at the fast stroke software. 
What FastStroke software does, it provides us with an integrated workflow of display and review of the multiple series that are required for the evaluation of ischemic stroke. We get a dynamic evaluation of the vascular condition from the multiphase CTA, and it uses this data for a merged view with the colour display to identify the vascular flow. It's also integrated with the automatic protocol CT Perfusion 4D stroke if you have a license for Perfusion 4D. Fast Stroke simplifies and organizes the workflow for stroke patients and it organizes the image review to help you optimize res response time for an efficient assessment in stroke cases. We've already seen that uh, time is brain and fast stroke is time. So it's uh, designed to help you be quick with these patients. The ColorViz rendering is derived from merging all the phases loaded in the multi-phase CTA acquisition. The colour mask is displayed automatically and the colours are assigned depending on the arrival time of the contrast medium in the vessels, as well as how long it hangs around in the vessels, so the dwell time in the vessels. So a red colour is arterial phase, green colour is venous phase and the blue colour is a late phase. The dynamic data can then be processed using uh, CT perfusion software to calculate the functional maps such as cerebral blood flow, blood volume or mean transit time. These functional maps can be used to determine the presence and extent of perfusion deficits, which may help you in tissue classification, so infarcted tissues versus penumbra. There's a couple of clinical cases next, and this first one has come from Dr. Nierber of the University Hospital of Brussels. So they had a young patient suffering from an acute ischemic in infarct due to an occlusion of the left mi middle cerebral artery, and the time of onset was unknown. And they found that with this combined protocol of multi-phase angio and delayed acquisitions and using fast stroke with colour vis, they were quickly able to identify good collateral circulation within three minutes. And this finding was confirmed by the results of the CT perfusion that they did. And what they found was that in this time sensitive situation, this approach enabled them to quickly take the decision to initiate an IV thrombolysis and to perform a thrombectomy, which was successful. So this patient had a good outcome following that. The next case is a clinical case from Dr. Goyle, who is in Calgary. And the decision to send the patient for an interventional procedure, procedure was made within five minutes following the non-contrast head CT. So they've said that an important point to note in this case was that the team had already been able to make a decision to send the patient for an interventional procedure before they even looked at the perfusion scan. And Dr. Goyle has given us a quote here. He says, fast stroke is a user-friendly, robust solution to enable maximized efficiency in acute stroke imaging, and thus helps us to improve patient outcomes. He's also given us a little video here of a thrombectomy.
And these are the angio pictures of that case. So you can see that before they did the procedure, there's hardly any blood flow. And then post thrombectomy, you can see that uh, there's good filling of those vessels. So I'll just show you a demonstration of the software and how it works. So first of all, you need to pick up your patient and select fast stroke. And then you'll be able to see which uh, series you want. So you need to have the head without contrast, the multi-phase CTA with phases one, two and three. And if you've done a perfusion, select those as well. So the first review step at the top there is the non-contrast CT. So if we just work our way along, you can see that uh, this is just a normal um, brain scan that you can just look through as you would look through anything in the AW server. If we click on the next review step, this shows us um, some MIPS of the carotids and circle of Willis in coronal, axial and sagittal planes. You can see there that there's a, an occlusion on that artery. So this next review step shows us the collaterals in all three phases. You can just move up and down on that and you can see in phases two and three that the collateral filling on that right side is delayed. If we click on to the colour viz, what this is going to do is um, put those three phases together. It's going to register them together and then assign a colour according to the time the contrast arrives. So we can see that all the um, red vessels are arterial, the green are venous and the blue is that late phase collateral filling. The next review step along will use the perfusion. Just takes a little time to find the artery and vein. And then it's going to automatically give you your color maps. So you can see that area of de deficit there on the blood flow and blood volume and Tmax. If you want to change any of those maps, you can do that just by right clicking over the, over the map name. If you want to find out anything else about perfusion, there are a couple of uh, video tutorials that you can find on GE Cares. Also on GE Cares, you'll find the Fast Stroke Quick Guide. Uh, I know some of you have already downloaded that and I'll give you a chance to re-download it at the end. Um, if anybody would like to try out this software, 
Um, that can be arranged through a flex trial. So I just need to know what your um, software version of the AW server or workstation is, and I can arrange for you to have a trial of the software. So thank you for listening. And we'll move on to some questions and answers.